The Galaxy S20 FE was created to give customers a new Galaxy S20 flagship model for the current economic climate. What's up you guys, Lord Hazen here, back again with another video and before we get going, I just want to let you guys know that you want to be around for everything that's happening in 2022 on this channel. I'll leave it at that. Anyways, cool. Today we are going to be looking at the Samsung Galaxy S21 Fan Edition. There comes a point in time in a reviewer's uh, life where you have to ask yourself some questions, where you have to put yourself in the shoes of a phone manufacturer to really understand that device, what they're trying to do with that device, what market that device is um, targeted at, and why that device really exists. In this review, I'm going to be talking about all of that uh, regarding the Galaxy S21 Fan Edition. Let's get started. So, I have been using the Samsung Galaxy S21 Fan Edition. These names are getting crazy, but okay. For the past week, now I got it earlier than that, but I held off on my initial impressions because when a manufacturer drops a device uh, at launch, there's usually so much hype around that device and it's easy to get carried away with what people are saying, the thoughts they're giving, the impressions. And that's why I hold off on my impressions video a couple of days, two, three days maybe, a week at most, to fully take time with the device, understand it, and then drop my reviews. This is why this review is coming this late. Now, since I missed my impressions, what was the first impressions after I took this phone out of the box? Number one, I love the size, I love the weight, it's pretty light, easy to hold, nicely compact, feels super comfortable. I love the feel of the uh, rails, the side rails. I've got a big hand and using this phone one-handed is pretty easy for me. I also noticed that the camera bump this time isn't melded into the side rails, but instead it's a part of the back panel. Another thing I noticed was the flat display on this phone. I'm a big fan of flat displays and this just ticked that box for me. The rest is normal stuff we're used to. A camera at the back with the flash. The camera, as I said, is in line with the back panel, which is plastic. We're gonna get to that in a bit. The side rails, we've got the speaker grill, the USB Type-C port, the microphone and the SIM slot at the bottom. Buttons on the right, nothing on the left. A secondary microphone at the top and a center punch hole camera cutout at the front. The Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is a plastic built phone. It's got Gorilla Glass Victus up front, a dynamic AMOLED 120Hz 1080p screen, no variable refresh rate, content consumption is epic, viewing angles are great for Netflix and YouTube on the go. The phone should come with Android 12 and One UI 4 out of the box, but my unit here specifically doesn't have and I tried manually updating it, going into settings and searching for software update, and there's nothing yet. And fun fact, this phone doesn't ship with a calculator installed. I don't think I've experienced that with other phones I've used, other Samsung phones I've used specifically. And I find that quite interesting that I had to go to Samsung's own store to install a calculator for this phone. If you're getting this phone, let me know if your device ships with Android 12 and One UI 4 out the box, or you have to update it, or you have to wait for an update. And let me know if yours ships the calculator installed. Leave a comment down below. You get a Snapdragon 888 5G chip powering the phone, no SD card support. You can either pick this up as a 128 gig or 256 gig storage with either six or eight gigabytes of RAM. I have the eight gigabytes of RAM version. You get the exact same camera setup as the Galaxy S20 FE on both the front and the back. We're gonna get to the camera in a bit. And it gets a 4,500 mAh battery. On performance now, this here device is a performer. No brainer. Using the phone feels good. It feels fast, snappy. Just swiping around the UI, navigating the UI, navigating the phone itself feels good. It's a welcome experience. Those graphic intense games play really well on this phone. I'm talking the likes of Asphalt, Call of Duty, uh, Mobile or Fortnite on max graphic settings. This phone can handle that easily. Ah, and before you let me forget, the device can wirelessly charge. No worries, if you pick this device, this is a phone that can easily last you a whole day. And if you're a light user, you just use your phone for normal texting, a bit of light gaming here, talking like Candy Crush, Subway Surfers. This here device can get you 
one and a half. Two days if you really squeeze it. One thing I'm not a big fan of in terms of performance and battery is this here phone takes a long time to charge. A seriously long time to charge. You plug in a fast charger, cool, but it will still take one, one and a half hours to go from zero to 100. In 2022, where we live in a world where devices can go from zero to 100 in 30, 35, 45 minutes max, that's, that's a, yeah, it's an asterisk on this phone's battery. Uh, oh, and another quick side note before it slips my mind on the fingerprint scanner. If you pay attention real close, there are times when you're unlocking the device, you get this gray flash uh, across the whole screen. And it's something we noticed, um, I actually made a video on it. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link right under that like button. It's something I noticed in the Galaxy A32, A52, A72 fingerprint scanners last year. And it's not, it doesn't happen as frequent as what I experienced on those phones, but it's just something to notice. If you're paying attention, you will not miss it. This here is where we talk about the cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S21 Fun Edition. You get pretty much the same camera hardware with what is on the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE. And if I'm not wrong, the same specs as the S21. Correct me uh, if I'm wrong on that. But yeah, it is a camera performer. I like the camera. Here's the thing. I got Android 12 and One UI 4 uh, updates on the S21 Ultra. And that update brought a lot of visual layout changes in the camera. And those changes have really grown on me. They've really enhanced my experience on this camera. That same update has not yet hit this phone and it was a bit tedious to use old software. Oh, I'm calling Android 11 and One UI 3.1 old, but anyway. It was a bit tedious for me to use this camera coming from that camera. Not a deal breaker though, because this here camera is good. Images in bright light are good. The phone handles bright light exposure pretty well. Portrait shots are good with good edge mapping, but there are some gimmick portrait features like washed out backgrounds and, and color popped pictures. Nighttime shots take a bit of processing, but they are still good. This phone's camera hardware being similar to what is on the S20 Fan Edition makes me think and feel like everything new is happening software-wise. And we're gonna get to that later on uh, throughout the lifetime of this device when I'm comparing it to the S20 Fan Edition in a full out camera comparison video. You wanna subscribe so you don't miss that. Hi, um, hope you're good. It's a beautiful morning. She the got way. her hair done. Oh yeah, I got my, That's why she's... I, I got my hair done <laughs> and the pain. But one thing I'm loving about this uh -huh. is the clarity of the Samsung SE. Yeah. Whether it's all fun and you everything, like yeah. And also like the tiny beats. I think it's good. Meta meta. Na vile na na shine na meta meta. I look amazing. Okay. Yeah. Now with all that out of the way, this is a tricky bit about the Samsung S21 Fan Edition. Now after I got this phone and used it for a couple of days, the first question I asked myself was. What is the formula to making a fun edition device? After doing more research and uh, after doing more research from Samsung themselves, they make a fun edition device to bring all the best features from the flagship device to a phone that's cheaper priced. And they've nailed that. You've got A grade cameras, good. You've got a really good uh, Snapdragon 888 5G chipset powering up the device, epic. You've got an amazing screen, 120 hertz display. The build is good. You get features like wireless charging. The software is good. The hardware is good. Everything on this device is flagship spec. A little watered down, but still flagship. Here is where the waters get a bit murky. Okay, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE was released a couple of weeks away from the S22, S22 Plus, S22 Ultra, or S22 Note. We'll leave that to be seen. And it's been released in a time where you can pick up the S21, S21 Plus, S21 Ultra on very good deals. And that kind of blurs the line in the formula used to create a fun edition device. Is this a flagship device just watered down at a cheaper price for uh, the audience? Or is this a refresh of the uh, previously launched S21 line? Now, how they do it is a phone manufacturer will release a device. 
around the first two or three months of that device being released, there's so much hype going around it and sales are through the roof. As the device starts entering different seasons of the year, we're talking about holiday seasons, discount seasons, getting sales on different markets, attention is drawn away from it because the smartphone market as we know it right now is quickly evolving and always buzzing. So there are other devices coming out, grabbing attention of the audience uh, of the market. Now, what a smartphone uh, manufacturer like Samsung does is they'll drop a limited edition of the same devices they launched earlier in the year say a bts s21 plus device or an olympics themed s21 device to refresh the s21 line get attention back on that uh, lineup and i think that's where the fun edition falls follow me here the samsung galaxy s20 fe was dropped in october of 2020 that was to refresh the s20 line that had dropped earlier on in the year this has been dropped in january 2022. It's pretty hard to tell if this is a refresh or this is just Samsung sticking true to its formula of bringing all the flagship features into a device that's cheaper priced. It makes the questions more and harder to answer. What is the formula of the FE line? Is this what we are going to keep seeing as the FE line keeps evolving? Is the S22 fan edition device going to drop in 2022 or in 2023? Is it going to have all the flagship features just trickle down into a compact, uh, cheaper price device? Are Samsung going to go a bit crazy to make this a proper fun device? Here's a suggestion or theory that I've had for a while now to kind of improve or really make the fun edition stand out as a device on its own. Yeah, Not as a device strictly tied to the S line, uh, the S flagship line. What if Samsung trickled down everything, every feature, every spec of the flagship S line into the fan edition, but dropped in super fast charging, dropped in what crazier colors, dropped in a headphone jack? Think about it. What if Samsung did return a charge in the box and an SD card slot in their device just for the fan edition device. That is sure to make waves, enough waves to sustain this FA line as a line on its own, not just something that's totally tied down to the S line. I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the lifetime of this and it's not going to live out that long in this market, especially because the S22 lineup is just weeks away from the time I'm shooting this video and you can't pick up the S21, S21 Plus, S21 Ultra right now for huge, huge discounts. This isn't really going to survive in such a market, but it's still an overall good phone. And if you are someone that was looking or was waiting to pull the trigger on this, yeah, you can. Right, that said, I love this device. I love it when phone manufacturers trickle down features, specs, features, flagship specs into cheaper price phones for the users to enjoy. And this is definitely a phone people out there, people that pick it are gonna enjoy. You can't pick it right now, but I'd suggest either really looking at the S21 uh, line, you might get good deals on it, or if you can wait a little bit longer with the phone you have, wait for the S22 line that's about to drop in a few weeks. That said, Lord Hazen here. This is the first video I'm making in 2022. I've got a goal to make 100 quality videos in 2022. Let's see if this is the segue to that. That's been the S21 Fun Edition. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. I really appreciate it. It gets this video out to more and more people. Leave a comment down below on what you think the S21 Fun Edition really is. What the formula is. Should it exist? Let me know what you think about this device. Are you going to pick it up after watching this review? Let me know in the comments. Share this video with your friends. It goes a long way in uh, helping the channel. And uh, let me catch you in the next one. Peace.